Hi, this is Asterix, and welcome back to my channel. So, of course, today is Experimental Sunday. Um, so today, uh, when I sat down in front of the uh, piano, um, I, I, I had a little bit of a of, a, of an idea for where I wanted to start. Um, so I've been listening to a lot of blues lately. Um, just trying to encapsulate that particular genre um, and what what's unique about it. Um, I live in Texas and a lot of music, um, local music that um, you listen to is kind of uh, encapsulated with the blues. Um, a lot of country music. Um, as well as rock and R&B and it's like a mishmash of everything really to be honest um, and it's still been that it's still that way today um, so I kind of wanted to experiment a bit with the blues but I wanted to make it more modern um, I didn't want to go completely like trying to really blend um, that particular sound or style directly into what I do um, but I really wanted to try to do something so uh, as you know I've been experimenting with guitars quite a bit here lately and yes I'm back on my guitar kick and get used to it because <laughs> it's becoming a part of my setup um, so as I continue to learn how to integrate um, that sound into my music the more experimental I can get with how to incorporate it um, and if you don't uh, practice then you don't get good at it right so the more time that I spend with um, I try to blend those sounds and styles into my music the better it gets so all right so I said all of that to say let's just kind of get started um, I kind of started out really in a weird space with this one I started out with the bass first and then I threw a kind of a rhythm guitar in there and I'll just kind of play for you what it's doing. Okay, so let's just kind of start with the bass. Um, what I was doing actually was that kind of um, well, let me up oh, if it'll let me. Okay, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Okay, there we go. That's kind of weird. Okay, anyway. Um, so I was kind of messing around and uh, again the rhythms are um, hearing the bluesy rhythms is so I was trying to do like you know um, kind of a bluesy kind of pattern um, kind of more in line with that it's called a shuttle a shuffle really um, but I didn't want it to be all the way like a shuffle so that's kind of what I did um, so I was using a sub lab for that and it is a custom patch uh, it's called the big top stack but then it's a custom patch that I actually did some a little bit of changes to uh, with the filtering um, let's see what it else what else did I do to do to this one I think I changed a little bit of the drive and the harmonics which is the X sub um, I lowered that some and from there I added a waves of uh, Sapra uh, mono and I'm using a patch called bass girth so it gave it a little bit of uh, kind of a mid-rangey Kind of bouncy to it 
Um, from there, I added a Fab Filter Saturn. Yes, it's my favorite um, um, plugin uh, for bass because um, it gives it like that really harmonic saturation. Um, using the 808 Designer, and I'm using the Clean Tube sound, which um, is not as grungy as the um, um, the default setting, which is like heavy saturation. Um, so I knocked it down a couple of dBs and then I knocked the uh, bass up a couple of dBs and that's what gave me the sound that I'm working with now. Um, the guitar um, is a different kind of beast. Let me show you what that one's doing. So it is a contact instance of the Strummed Acoustic 2, which is a new um, sound bank that's included in the new um, Collection 12. Um, so it comes with a lot of new uh, strumming patterns. And I'm using one of the handmade patterns. Um, and on top of that, I'm using the Guitar Rig 5. And I am loving Guitar Rig 5. I just didn't realize how handy this plugin would be um, uh, with guitars. Um, it has a lot of really cool preset um, cabinet sounds. So I'm using one called Tweed and Cat. And most of these I really don't have to ever like do a lot of, of changes to um, because the preset is just that good. Um, and of course, you know, since I'm a beginning guitarist, <laughs> uh, experimenter, um, I'm finding that the, the sounds and tones that I'm hearing from the, the basic patches are sounding really good. But I'm sure that that'll change over time. The more that I integrate this, the more that I want to experiment and understand the tones that I'm able to get from the sounds. So it's just a part of, of growing. Um, sometimes you start out with the patches and then you just kind of start getting into the more experimental phase of things. Um, and then you start making your own patches. Um, so I'm using also an RC tw uh, RC24, which is one of those contact uh, um, effects, and I'm using the small hall. Um, this is a basic patch. I didn't change very much on it because it had really good uh, blend in it already. And a, I put a Fab Filter Pro Q3 in there to knock off the lows. I didn't want to have it as muddy. Um, as it was sounding to begin with, or have it compete with the, the uh, sub bass. Okay, from there, um, I have a melodic element in there. It's a loop, and it is doing this. I'm using uh, Native Instruments Flare. Um, this is also part of their um, uh, effects package and I'm using the patch called Tape Drift and I'm using another Native Instruments um, effect called Faces and I'm using the plugin called Modern Classic and I haven't made any changes to these I'm just using basic patches and um, sometimes it works and sometimes they sound really good and that's just the way it is for that one. Okay, so from there, I actually added um, um, a piano element and I'm using the Keyscape for that. So I played, hand played these in um, and this is what I'm doing with this pattern. So it's kind of a stepped sound. Okay, with that, I am using an Endless Smile um, at the uh, one o'clock setting. And then Portal. Let's see, I don't think I made a change to Portal. Yeah, maybe I did, hold on. So I'm using a uh, patch called Pitch Artifacts and I'm only using um, a quarter of it. And I have my grains like off to the left if you can see that, how it's going there. And for movement, instead of having it be stagnant in the middle, 
I added a pancake too, which is by the cable guys, and it's just doing a basic pan left and right. Um, sometimes I'll do that for dynamics, um, adding the panning in there. Um, from there, I went to the rhythm section. So this song was built with uh, um, the guitar and the bass to begin with. So kind of the rhythm section is how I started out, which is a little different for me because I never normally start my songs that way. I normally start with a melody. Um, so that's why I'm, this song is a little unique to me. Um, but this is just the rhythm section. Okay, so that's what that's doing. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I just kind of built the um, built the track around that and that's all I've got for this one. Um, so I'm again, I'm continuing to kind of do more kind of rhythmic experimentation as well as um, experimenting with different patches and sounds. I have been busy all week uh, messing with the Reason 11 beta. Um, uh, that's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to the release this week so that I can show you guys what I've been working on with that. Um, I started out as a Reason user and <laughs> it has been so much fun being able to have access to those sounds again. Um, I have been missing using, um, a lot of the, the, um, uh, rack extensions that I had uh, gotten so used to using over the years. Um, I love G Ableton, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not a real fan of Ableton's, um, Max for Live, uh, instruments. They're not really intuitive to me. Um, from a patch perspective, um, they're great for tinkering, but not necessarily for somebody who just wants to go in there and find a sound per se. Um, it's about, it's super experimental and sometimes you just don't want to be super experimental, like having to build your own sound before you even create the sound, the song. <laughs> so sometimes you just want to have a sound or be inspired by a sound and then create the song. Um, and that's just kind of how I feel sometimes about those Max for Live um, uh, instruments. Um, but with Reason, um, the rack extensions, you know, they're pretty much custom designed um, by Reason Studios to um, uh, include lots of really great, well thought out patches. And so it's really inspiring when you actually open up one of their, like, say, for instance, Grain. Uh, and just kind of go through the patch list and then start wanting to experiment from there, from the sounds that you're actually hearing, um, connect it with something else, use an accommodator, um, and do all kinds of experimental stuff. So it'll be great to be able to get back into having direct access inside of Ableton um, to all of the Reason Rack extensions. Um, doesn't mean it's replacing all the other stuff that I like to play with. Um, it's just an addition to the things I like to play with within uh, Ableton, which is cool. So I almost feel like I'm <laughs> very close to having the best DAW um, available to me. Um, I, I, I'm not going back. I think I'm very comfortable with having Ableton and access to all the VSTs that I have. And with the addition of the rack, um, I feel like I finally have uh, what I was looking for originally. So, well, that's all that I have for today. And I'll see you guys next weekend. And next weekend will be fun because I get to play with a reason. <laughs> um, I'll see you later.